this topic is going to cover five tools and techniques used to develop the schedule. The first is resource optimization. The resources allocated for each activity can affect how activities must be scheduled. Resource optimization involves adjusting the resources allocated to activities to optimize both resource use and the schedule. The goal of resource optimization is to ensure that demand doesn't exceed availability. So you use this technique when resources have been over allocated, are only available at specific times, or are limited in numbers. The resource optimization technique can also involve increasing the estimated duration of an activity because of a resource constraint. For example, based on the earliest date when required equipment can be delivered. Resource optimization is all about moving resources from non-critical to critical activities and can help reduce a project's total plan duration. For example, when developing a new computer game, designing the game is a critical activity, but preparing a product manual isn't. In this schedule, the project manager may be able to move some technicians off preparing the manual and onto game design to make sure the project can finish on time. Many project scheduling tools are available on the market, usually coming as part of a project management application such as Microsoft Project and can help make scheduling easier, faster, and more accurate. These automated tools generate start and finish dates based on various inputs such as activities, network diagrams, resources, and activity durations. These are very helpful in planning a successful project schedule. A scheduling tool has several benefits, such as it saves you time, automatically does much of the tedious work of calculating the schedule, helps prevent errors you might make in manual calculations, provides a professional layout for the schedule, making it easier to communicate the information it contains to the project team and stakeholders. Two more tools and techniques that you can use when developing the schedule are leads and lags and schedule compression. Since they are related, I'm going to cover them in the same topic, so leads and lags. A lead occurs when an activity can begin before a predecessor activity completes. For example, an editor may edit a manuscript chapter by chapter instead of waiting for the entire manuscript to be completed to save time. The start-to-start -start relationship between these activities creates a lead. A lag, on the other hand, delays a successor activity. For example, if cement must dry before the next scheduled activity can start, the finish to start relationship between these activities represents a lag. The technique of applying leads and lags to the schedule is essentially a three-step process. First, you consider possible leads and lags in the schedule when sequencing activities. This is when you're creating the schedule network diagram and plotting activity dependencies and relationships. You apply specific leads and lags in terms of dates to the schedule once you've identified the project's critical path and estimated its start and finish dates. Finally, once you've applied all the other scheduling techniques and a draft schedule is complete, you adjust leads and lags by going back over them and changing them as necessary to ensure the schedule is viable. Along the same lines is another technique called schedule compression. This involves reducing a project's duration without changing its scope. Two ways you can do this are known as crashing and fast tracking. Crashing involves shortening the duration of activities, usually by assigning more resources to those activities. Crashing involves making trade-offs between costs and the schedule. If more resources are allocated, an activity can often be completed faster, but this means spending more on resources. Crashing can also involve identifying which activities are really critical and removing activities that are important but not critical. Sometimes this can make it necessary to resequence the activities that are left and may mean changing a project's critical path. Fast tracking involves scheduling two or more activities to be performed in parallel instead of one at a time. This helps speed up a project. For example, having technicians test each module of a program as it's finished instead of waiting for the whole program to be completed could save time. A downside to fast tracking is that it may increase project risk. Fast tracking can only be used if activities can be safely overlapped. For example, testing modules while development work continues instead of testing a finished and integrated program may mean errors could be missed. 
So in summary, applying leads where possible during schedule development ensures your schedule is as short as possible. And two schedule compression techniques that will also help shorten a schedule are crashing and fast tracking.